Hey everyone, Keegan with Dark Arrow. We just finished machining out some of these trailing link components for the main gear. We got them assembled and bolted onto the wheel. Let's check out how we machine them out. So this stock right here, I think is for those two link halves. Doing one of the trailing links for the main gear. I'm getting the first operation all tooled up in the cam and just going through them really quick, line by line, making sure everything looks good. And then I'm gonna export that. Um, it's called post-processing. It's gonna convert it to G-code, which the CNC machine can read. So once we get all that done, we're gonna be hitting go on the CNC and start cutting this thing out. What tool are you starting with? The drill. We have the stock loaded up for the trailing link. This is gonna be op one. We've got the tool paths pulled up and we've got our first tool loaded in. We're gonna start by drilling some uh, holes in there that's gonna allow some clearance for when our end milk does a helical path in to remove material. So I'm ready to hit go here. There's gonna be three holes that we drill. So uh, basically these holes, again, are just a uh, preemptive measure to help allow the end mill drop in and chip clear. So the outer trailing link, uh, we're machining 7075 T6 aluminum right now. Pretty much your bread and butter machining material. After this is finished up, I'm going to put tool number 26 in, which is a three flute end mill. Bull nose, 0.375 inch. Before we get too far into machining these trailing links, I want to show the CAD model of these parts so that uh, we're all on the same page and understand where these parts go in the landing gear and what they do. So we'll jump into the CAD here and check that out. We're looking at the assembly for the right main landing gear on the Dark Arrow 1, and it's made up of the strut, the trailing link, the air shock, and the wheel and brake assembly. The trailing link is mounted to the bottom of the strut, and it pivots when going over bumps or during hard landing impacts to absorb energy and provide suspension. We did a more in-depth video about the suspension. If you want to learn more about that, you can check it out on our channel after you finish watching this video. For now, we are focusing on the trailing link, though. The trailing link is actually an assembly of two halves, an inner and an outer half. So that's what we are machining on the Tormach today. Let's head back over to the mill to see how the machining is progressing. So now we'll go with tool 26. And this is going to rough the outside and it's going to face the top and finish the outside edge. Looking for 1.5 on the width here. Oopsies. <laughs> yeah, we're so we're finished up with op one, and this is all we can do from here with this setup. So we're just gonna take this out and then machine out the other trailing link. And it's the other trailing link is mirrored of this, so it's pretty much gonna replicate what we got going on here. And then once we finish that one, um, we'll be ready to sh uh, change out the jaws in this to hold this profile itself. How's it look? Good. This is side one of the inner trailing link. Just finished up. I'm gonna do one little tweak to these holes. I'm gonna just chamfer them slightly. And I'm just double checking some of the outer dimensions of it, but everything looks pretty good. So uh, we're ready to go to get the next one in here and finish that one up as well for op one and then move on to the other operations. Yeah, so something interesting you pointed out when we were talking this morning was that uh, these inner links, they're actually mirror images of each other, but the op one is the same for both parts. So that's kind of nice. You can just copy over the tool paths on both the left and right inner links. Yeah, and we put our work stop in here and we already had our offsets grabbed in the, the back corner here. 
So once I pull this out, we're just gonna drop this in and run the same program again, and we should be done with op one for both of these. So these parts are going by pretty quick, which is really fun and rewarding to just see them materialize like that. We have all the side one machining done for both the inner and outer trailing links for the left and right side of the aircraft. Before we can proceed any further with this though, we need to create soft jaws so that we can fixture this stock in this orientation to take off the rest of the material. Uh, Keegan's gonna talk you through that. So let's see what you got. Yeah, so like Riley was saying, this is op one completed and we'll have to flip it over to get to the uh, backside here of this stock. And that's what I've got shown on the computer. So the uh, darker gray portion here is the soft jaw. So I can actually hide um, some of what's going on here so you can see better what we're actually gonna machine out. So it's just these two halves right here. We have them loaded up in the CNC. I've got all the tool pads ready to go. So we're just gonna machine these out. Here are the soft jaws loaded in the vise. This is how they start out before we machine into them. So basically it looks like a normal vise. And then the soft jaws just have a profile that allows us to grab the part uh, precisely. Uh, we actually did a video specifically about soft jaws. You, go, you should go check that out on our channel after you finish watching this video. Let's machine them. Okay, throw it in there. So just finished up machining the soft jaw for the inner link and we're just dropping the half machined inner link into it to show you guys how that fits in there. There's a feature machine on the other side of the soft jaw, um, little hole there that we use to locate this thing in the middle coordinate system. So now we can machine um, the rest of the stock off. Setting up here to do the side two finish machining for the outer trailing links. And what Keegan's doing here is basically zeroing the machine with the soft jaws in with a preload installed. So he's got this one, two, three block in the soft jaws. You torque that down to a specified torque. And there's a little bit of flex that occurs in these jaws. And because we're picking up our zero point off this little circular feature, if these flex, that's gonna alter the position of that zero. So we want to account for that uh, when we clamp the jaws down. So now that we got the one, two, three block in there, it's clamped down, we can pick up the zero and all that deflection and offset will be accounted for in our setup. So we just finished the side two final machining operation for the outer link, the right side or the right landing gear. Uh, we're checking a couple dimensions to make sure everything looks good. Just did a trial fit up with one of these machine screws. Uh, it goes in there pretty good. Whoa. But uh, one thing that I wasn't fully certain, certain of in the CAD was the depth of my chamfer. And this is just sitting slightly proud right now. So I think we're going to go back for a second pass on the chamfer. Just take a little bit off to get that so it's not sitting proud. But looking good otherwise. So we finished the side two machining operation for the outer trailing links. These are basically done. There's one more thing we need to do though, uh, which is cut the threads in these four little holes. I've already done that on this side. You can probably see the threads in this link. It's a quarter-28 thread, which is the thread for an AN4 size bolt. So this one still needs the threads cut and we'll do that next. All done. All right, we've got the inner trailing link and the outer trailing link all finished up. We were just doing some small tweaks with the tool paths to make sure that we get a good fit. So let's try fitting this on now. That's the two halves coming together. Looks pretty good. Everything's lining up pretty good now. We're pretty happy with that. We have both the outer and inner trailing link all finished up off the machine. So now we're gonna assemble these uh, with the wheel and axle assembly. Let's do it.
There it is. Let's go for a little drive. These trailing link parts were kind of interesting to machine. There's a couple of really critical features dimensionally that need to be uh, really accurate in order for this whole assembly to fit together. So these diameters, so these pins, they're critical because there's some bushings that fit on here and they need to spin freely. Uh, and then these pilot features and the heights of these pins uh, is also critical. Uh, if they're not right, then this assembly doesn't come together properly. Um, but considering this is the first time we machined them out and they all fit together this nicely, um, I think we did a pretty good job and we're pretty pleased with the results. That was the process from start to finish for machining out these trailing link components. We've got a couple more to go. One in particular is this shock bottom bracket, which we're gonna be machining out from this billet. That's gonna form that part that you see right there on the screen. That's gonna allow us to attach this shock to our trailing link assembly. So that's all we have for this video. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm trying to think of how to show it that people won't think it's jank. <laughs>